Abdallah al Omari left Syria in 2012. After being forced to run from a conflict that was tearing his country apart, he found inspiration for a new series of artwork that would go viral online. Using these familiar faces, very accessible faces to the media, to a, a, a bigger, a most wider scale of, of audience, was a tool for me to talk about a more elevated idea, which is uh, the vulnerability. His work, titled The Vulnerability Series, depicts refugees and people in desperate situations, but with a major twist. He paints in the faces of world leaders. My personal experience as, as a beginning of being exiled and being in a refugee, that was the beginning. I had the anger and the frustration that anyone would have in this situation. Omari claimed asylum in Belgium and now works from a studio in Brussels. I particularly like the one of Donald Trump because he's holding a small girl and he's got a mat kind of rolled up on his back and he's holding a picture like some refugees sometimes when they hold up a picture of their family to say this is the family I left behind, these are the people I've lost. Mm -hmm. And the picture he's holding up is inspired by one of your family, old yeah. family photos. Yes, a black and white family photo I had. There was this moment like almost a transition from the anger I had towards something more powerful, which is the impact of vulnerability, that I started feeling empathy towards these characters that, you, that absolutely don't need our empathy. What is your fantasy version um, okay, my of, fantasy of what Bashar al-Assad <laughs> would yeah. think to himself if he saw your painting? If Bashar al-Assad would look at this painting, I'm very sure he would emotionally be triggered. He would look at himself in his, his eyes in this very vulnerable state and he would think that, wow, how difficult that could be if I'm in that position. One of Omari's most powerful paintings was inspired by a photo that went viral in 2014. It shows people lining up for food in the Damascus district of Yarmouk, where Omari himself lived for the first 20 years of his life. These people were in the most horrible situation. They didn't have food to eat. They were eating grass. They were eating pets, their pets, so they, they can survive. It was the most apocalyptic image that you could see, that you wouldn't imagine this could happen in reality in the world. And so then you put all these leaders in that group. Is it satisfying sometimes to see them it, suffer? Absolutely. You would feel satisfied at some point, but just the layer underneath is the, the most important for me, which is realizing the connection that you would suddenly have with this face. I didn't want to humiliate any of them. It wasn't actually criticizing them. And it's very superficial for me to criticize political leaders in this case. One of Omari's current projects is a work he calls The Boat, a painting of a refugee boat crammed full of people. But look closer and you notice a difference. The faces of Vladimir Putin, Theresa May, or Benjamin Netanyahu. The piece is being moved from gallery to gallery around the world, and Omari constantly updates with the faces of new world leaders. The idea is to point out that the political leaders are always changing, so the power is being inherited with the problems just being passed from one political leader to the other. Omari's art, he says, will continue as long as the world's problems persist.